to be before you once again today. If you would be turning over to the book of Daniel, chapter 5. We're not going to read that passage just yet, but we will shortly. I would like to point out this morning, it was brought to my attention, I had uh, apparently referenced the wrong Alexander Campbell. One of discussion this morning was born in 1788 and died 1866. Like I said, that must have been a different Alexander Campbell. But nonetheless, I wanted to clear that up first. Today, if two people disagree over the length of something, let's say one of these pews, how will they determine who is right? Well, they figure it out by using a standard. They would use either a ruler or a measuring tape. In fact, this morning in our Bible class, we were discussing cubits. So we measured out one of our tables in the class. I used my cubit, and the students used some of their cubits. You reckon we had the same length of table? We had different standards. My cubit, as most are, is elbowed tip of fingertip. I've got a longer cubit. Well, we got to have the right standard. If folks happen to disagree over how, so, how much something weighs, again, how would they determine who is right? Well, they must still appeal to a standard, but you wouldn't use a, a measuring tape on that. You would use a scale. When people disagree about religious matters, how will they go about determining who is right? In every scenario between at least two people, at least one of them must be wrong. Could even be the case that they're both wrong in, in these religious matters. But again, they must go to a standard to determine who is right. Now, to our text, we find in Daniel chapter 5, I'd like to read from verse 22 all the way through <clears throat> verse 30, we have Daniel appearing before the king, Belshazzar, not Belteshazzar, but Belshazzar, this is Nebuchadnezzar's son. <clears throat> Beginning there in verse 22, it says, And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, Hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven. And they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver, and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know and the God in whose hand thy breath is and whose all are thy ways hast thou not glorified then was the part of the hand sent from him and this writing was written going back to before this passage this is the account where the the hand is writing on the wall and Daniel's brought in to try to determine what this message means Verse 25, and this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tekel, ufarsin. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet, and put a chain of gold about his neck, and made a proclamation concerning him, that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now in that, verse 30, in that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. As Christians, we are called to be fruit inspectors. We are expected to use righteous judgment. 
In this passage, the king was found wanting. But in whose scales was he judged? Well, that would be God's scales. God's standard. As Christians, we're expected to use God's standard. First and foremost, with ourselves. Are we found wanting? Are we right before God? Then as we deal with the world, and deal with the world we must, we cannot escape it until we die. Do those we come into contact measure up with God's standard? I think it's rather obvious that they would not. Otherwise, they wouldn't be of the world. But the focus must be that we seek and find what is right. The world has been given the Bible. This is the very mind of God recorded for us. The complete and final source of religious authority for mankind. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. From, from there, we're expected to make sure that we are right before our Creator. Being weighed in the balances, would you be found faithful? Would I be found faithful? I've got to weigh myself in these balances. Or would I come up wanting? Would you come up wanting? You're lacking, you're, you're deficient in some area. Is this the case? If this is indeed the case, why not apply with the applicable terms of pardon that God has set out for us? Now, for those who are not Christians, you are indeed found wanting. You're lacking your Heavenly Father. You have ignored Him. You have spurned this gospel call, but that doesn't have to remain such. We're about to sing in a few moments. Why do you wait? Well, why do you wait? We're not granted another day, another hour, another minute. You cannot guarantee that you will be alive to see the sun tomorrow. As a Christian, are you found wanting? Same applies. You know, God allows for our pardon as well as Christians. He is just and faithful to forgive us of our sins when we repent and confess them. If either of these apply to you, please make it known as together we stand and sing. <laughs>